Yo, what's going on guys, this is Brent again, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to set up, install, and run a Mongo database. First up, go to mongodb.org and click Download Mongo Database. Scroll down to the middle of the page and you're gonna be able to select your operating system and the version number you want. I'm gonna go ahead and download the Windows 64-bit version and download the MSI. So now that we have the installer, go ahead and click Next, accept the terms. We're gonna use a custom install, and then we're gonna to browse to see. I'm gonna just in install mine in MongoDB here. In fact, I'm gonna put it on my D drive because uh, it's where I like to keep stuff, D. And then go ahead and click Next and install. So let's go ahead and navigate to our D drive, Mongo database, the bin folder, and you're gonna see all the files that got uh, downloaded or installed. We're interested in the mongod.exe, um, but before we run that, we actually need to make the file or the folder structure that the uh, database is actually gonna be saved in. So shift and right click in the white space to open a terminal window, and then md data db, and that is going to create a new folder in our D drive here called data database. If you try to run MongoDB before you do that, you're, it's not gonna run. So after you've created that directory, go ahead and uh, do mongo.exe, go ahead and uh, run it. You may get a security error, go ahead and click yes to allow connections. And now that you can, now you can see that the database is waiting for connections. So that's actually it. We have a Mongo database up and running. Now what you probably want to do is be able to view that database. Uh, so an easy way other than using the command line is to download Mongo or RoboMongo. So if you go to robomongo.org, download, install that. That's a simple setup, so I'm not going to go over that. And now I'm going to show you how to use it. So you're gonna be presented with a screen like this when you open up RoboMongo. You won't have these two here because I've already added, but we're gonna create a new uh, connection. The address is going to be localhost because we're running it on our local machine. And then the port by default is 27017. And we can see that also here at the very top of when we started our Mongo database. Um, let's see, it says MongoDB starting. It uh, gives us the... Um, process ID, and then the port number 27017. Uh, so go ahead and click save, and then connect to that new connection. Then what you're gonna see is down here in our Mongo database, we see that there was a connection accepted from our local host, uh, two of them actually, and that's just how M Robo Mongo works. Okay, so our database is actually empty right now, so that's why we can't see anything in RoboMongo. I've written a uh, application that saves user data to the database, uh, so I'm gonna just show you that. That's outside of the scope of this video. You can watch uh, my Node.js tutorials to find out how to save stuff to the database, um, but let's go ahead and log in with Facebook. That has saved data to our local database, and now if we right-click and refresh here, you're gonna see a My App with a collection of users and sessions. And you can see that it says Facebook information, my email and an ID token. And now we actually have a graphical user interface for our Mongo database. So that's it. We've installed, set up, and run a Mongo database, and we've also viewed content inside that Mongo database using RoboMongo. Uh, if you want to know how to insert data into a Mongo database in a web application, you need to check out my Node.js tutorials. There's plenty of information on that uh, there, and I'll probably post a, a link to at least one or two of the videos uh, in the description below. If you like this video, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post them below. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.